church. Amen. You want to begin to worship the Lord right now? I need to find my other ear. There it is. <laughs> I hope you came prepared today to give God the glory. He deserves it all. Amen. 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 So we are going to choose to be in a posture of worship. We're going to choose to uh, not only shut off the ringers on our cell phones, but also put our to-do list on the side. Let's trust that God can take care. He's got the whole world in his hands. He can certainly take Amen. care of Amen. all of our to-do things for the next, well, I, I don't preach that long. So for the next three or four hours, no problem. <laughs> no, no, we're glad you're in the house today. It's time to celebrate. That's what we want to do. Father, you deserve all the praise and glory, and we choose right now to step into exalting your name to the yes. highest place because you are worth it. We love you, Jesus. Amen, amen. amen. Let's worship the Lord. tattooing things going on a little bit of clapping we always <laughs> appreciate that we we want to welcome you in the name of the lord to city christian center we want to welcome those who are online we have some guests in the house and we have some people who are not so guesty some of you have been here before me we're uh, we're coming up on being here 11 years now and uh and you guys have been such a family to our family 
Now it's Cheryl and I. <laughs> uh, but uh, you guys just continue to bless us. I want you to know Sunday mornings is not just a time where I get to preach or I get to worship or where I get to come together with this family. And so if you are realizing what this place is like, um, we're really glad you're here. If you haven't yet discovered that, uh, we want you to know that we are so glad that you're here today. This is something we do as a greeting. If you're not so, uh, you know, people-minded, you just stand where you are and wave. But otherwise, we uh, high-five and hug and shake hands and everything. Let's greet one another in the name of the Lord. All right, ladies and gentlemen, good morning, good morning, good morning, good afternoon. <laughs> 
Do me a favor and give the Lord a hand. Just praise God with your clapping. Hallelujah. God is good. He's so good, right? We won't do the wave this morning or anything. Shaking hands was enough, but we have some special announcers coming to tell us what's going on at CCC. Come on up, ladies. Welcome to CCC service here and online. Uh, if you want to give to the church, you, we have three ways to give. One is at the box in the back. Another is online at our website, Canada Helps link. And a, a third one is at e-transfer at cccadmin at kingston.net. In the message, please include your name, number, and de designation. Parking lot expansion. We're na we've now raised just over 26,000. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Please give as you're able. Newcomers lunch today following the service. If you're new to CCC in the last six to eight months, please join us. Deeper Life is back this Wednesday at 7 p.m. Filipino Deeper Life is still Friday at 6.30. Missions, commit, com, missions Commitment me, Committee mean, meeting this Thursday at 4 o'clock p.m. There's a board meeting this Thursday at 6.30 p.m. Praise and Worship Youth Night is at the Salvation Army Citadel Friday, 20, Friday 27, 7 to 9 p.m. Please let Pastor Brianna know for numbers. Men's Breakfast next Saturday, September 28th at 9 a.m. Please let Rick know for numbers. Upper, Upper room's back. back. <laughs> <laughs> this Sunday, September 29th at 6 p.m. Now we would like to call up Pastor Brianna to release the children. All right, just one more quick announcement. We had so many things this morning. Uh, just a reminder that the baby shower for Robin's daughter, yes, Rachel, is on October 6th at 2 p.m. Um, is that a Sunday, Cheryl? It is a Sunday, so it'll be happening right after the service, afternoon at 2 o'clock. All right, if you uh, are one of the ladies who are going to come out to support Robin and her daughter, uh, that's for you to be aware of. All right, kids, you can come on up. We're going to head down to Super Church. So come over to the stair. I know you guys are super eager. Don't run down the stairs yet until I pray for you. <laughs> See, I knew that was happening. They're just too eager. <laughs> it's awesome. All right. Will you join me in praying over them as they head downstairs this morning? Heavenly Father, I thank you for the joy that's in this room with these kids, the excitement and the, the happiness and the fun that they bring to our church. God, I pray that you would bless them as they head down to Super Church this morning. I pray that you would increase their knowledge and understanding of you, but also their love for you, um, that they would know how much you love them as well. Bless the teachers um, as they share what they've prepared this morning. Uh, pour your spirit out upon them as they teach. Um, and I pray that we would all have just a wonderful time together this morning, uh, learning more about you and uh, seeking you together. In Jesus' name, amen. It's so much going on, we had to sort of limit what we're, what's coming up, but uh, there's a lot coming up, actually. Excited, and we'll be letting you know in the coming days about special guests from our district and from our missions and as well as starting a new program hopefully in the new year called grief share which is incredible um and so yeah there's a lot going on in our parking lot uh just so you know in context context we last week we were saying thank you god for sixteen thousand, and then after sunday we're now saying thank you god for twenty six thousand. you do the math let's keep worshiping the lord <laughs>
testimony, God, we pray for the power of your Holy Spirit. Stand up for you, Lord. Stand for the truth. Bring you glory. To live by the power of your word, God, in your strength. It's our determination that our testimony will be this song. says that the man loved darkness instead of the light. God, you've shown us something. That's why we're here today. That we would choose to accept you and to live for you. Lord, we need your courage. We need the, your anointing. God, I pray when it counts the most, we would let people know about your love and forgiveness, your truth signs of character you ask for us in your word, that we would stand up and learn how to be righteous. The songwriter asked us questions of the war going inside of him. But his choice, his choice is our choice this morning. So we give up ourselves, our flesh, our own desires. At the end of the day, Help us weigh that cost, Lord. Jesus, Jesus, like the rich young Jesus, ruler. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, you always knew what question to ask to challenge our what was going on in our spirits and our minds, the things that we held closest to our chest. Jesus, Jesus. Love 
us even unto death. Call us to the same, to offer ourselves to you. Because you have plans and purposes to bless, to empower us. We want to be in the center of your will, Lord God. We need your help for that. Let's trust you. We will not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. all other stuff out of the way, God. Help us focus on you. Thank you, Lord God. The power of your spirit is enough to transform us, to save us, heal us, restore us, empower us, and move us forward in the center of your will, not ours. So we ask for you to move, Lord God, for your glory. Thank you, Jesus.
for your presence, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Sweet presence. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Your sweet presence, Lord. Your sweet presence, Jesus. You go behind us and you stand right beside us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Church, raise your voice to him. He is more than enough. He is more than enough for what you are going through. He is more than enough what next week holds. He is more than enough what last week held. He is more than enough. More than enough. More than enough. Hallelujah. 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 You are more than enough for us, God. No matter what we face, you are there. No matter what we face, you stand. promises you are with us and Holy Spirit we feel your presence here this morning if you're wondering if there is a God he is in the house this morning come on he is in the house this morning we feel his presence here this morning if you ever question is there a God there is a God and he is here to meet with you today today is the day of salvation today is the day where he is enough today is the day where you do not tomorrow alone. Today is the day where you know that your God is here and we need to stand with him. We need to take courage, church. We need to be brave in a world where it's tough to be brave, but we need to stand because he stands with us. Hallelujah. 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 Good God. 
He is a good God. Give him a praise this morning, church. Give him a praise this morning, church. You are a good God, and we worship you today. Hallelujah. 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 You are more than worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You are so good, God. You are so good, God. You are so good, God. I don't know about you, church, but I needed that this morning. I needed that this morning. Hallelujah. My spirit feels so much better. I don't know about your work week this last week. I don't know what you faced, but my spirit needed to know. My spirit needed to know that God is more than enough for Thank me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Hallelujah. Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Thank God. You, God. Thank you, Lord. Have your way as the word comes now, Lord, that you will impact, Lord. You're Jesus, already preaching the message Jesus. that you placed in my heart. So, Holy Spirit, I know you're working, <laughs> Praise God. God. Thank you, Lord, for what you've set apart for <laughs> us to you, do. Lord. Help us listen. Help us get something in our spirits. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, that you can cover it. Whatever you're calling yeah. us to, you've already been there. You've already got enough strength for us to step into it. And so we give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name, all God's saints say, amen. You may be seated. Thank you, church. Praise you, God. Thank you, Lord. Whew. God is a good God. He is so ready. So ready. My iPad is not ready, however. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. God, we thank you for the power of your word. It can come through worship, it can come in prayer, it can come in preaching and reading the word. I just thank you, God, for our privilege of, of knowing you and of being in those places where your peace overwhelms us. Thank you, God. Amen. And when I have technical difficulties, you just cut me out of four, I'll be okay. Um, you know, when I have technical difficulties, uh, I, I used to do a, a singing and speaking seminar and... Um, I would pull up the announcements from a week and I would say uh, to the people who, who wanted to learn how to, to speak, you're going to preach the announcements. So they had to, with all the conviction they could muster, deliver the announcements. And a little bit of, ha, ah, at the end of every announcement, uh, I could get it uh, done. Hallelujah. This more, I have got my notes now, so it's good. You're, you're lucky because otherwise I just keep on going and... And you'd be in trouble. Ah. <laughs> this morning I'm speaking on something called more than just making it. Because often we talk about God delivering us in our, our valley, in our struggle. And we can get so focused on that struggle, that valley that we're in. Uh, that we're all about, oh God, help me, God, help me. And we're in that state of, I'm always at the bottom looking up and always needing a hand. And in the frailty of our humanness, while that is true often, struggling with things that are... Um, giving us a hard time. We're also supposed to go from victory into victory. And some people are so hungry for this, the latest, greatest move of God, they run from one church where God's moving something to another church where God's to this revival here and then that revival over there and this conference and that conference. And, and what I learned from a, a really wise pastor, he's actually the brother-in-law of Ravi Zacharias. I was on his staff, a brilliant teacher, uh, did a sabbatical with Eugene Peterson and uh, sat under his feet for six months, just like le gleaning from him. And uh, he was saying, there's space between the footprints. 
Just like Peter wanted to stay in the Mount of Transfiguration and, and you know, just kind of soak up the glory and just stay there. Jesus says, no, there's, there's work to do. It's the same thing with being in that state where God can deliver us in a time of need where, where we're our back's against the wall and we just need him to reach us up. Like Psalm 40 that says, I was stuck in the mud and the mire, but I waited patiently for the Lord. He drew me up and put me on a rock. And that is a beautiful metaphor, the power of God in helping us survive. But there are a lot of Christians today, and their whole mode of operation is just survival. And they just got to get to next Sunday, and then, Lord, pull, pull, up, pull up my bootstraps one more time. God, help me make it to next Sunday morning so I can get back here and get my next infusion. And while being in corporate worship and, and hearing the word together, that is very important for your spiritual health, your spiritual life, absolutely. But if that's all you're doing, I mean, how many of you ever tried dieting? And how many of you are lying right now? Yes. Uh, all the people online raised their hands. Now. How many of you tried a diet? Did you re recognize actually that the word diet is simply what you choose to eat at any given moment? But there are special diets. The Scarsdale diet, the keto diet, the whatever diet. Pick, pick what kind you are. You're an ectomorph or an alien or whatever. And you too can shape your body. And, but you need a steady diet. And, I, and I've done some fasting before. And uh, I think I did 21 days was my longest time fasting. Obviously not recently, but, uh, no. <laughs> but a, a couple of days fasting, it helps you spiritually focus your prayers. And, and uh, um, if you have a burden you're interceding for or whatever, it's important. But I, I've never just eaten once a week. Have you ever eaten just once a week? In fact, even when you fast, you need to be drinking fluids, and sometimes you need to be like drinking a vegetable juice or something else to help build your immune system. Or you may be doing a Daniel fast, which is, you know, partially taking things, some things that mean a lot to you that you're, you're saying no to on purpose so that you can focus in prayer. But to eat on a Sunday morning between 10, 30, and 12, and then not eat again until next, now you guys are all going to be thinking about 12, 30, right? <laughs> Mandarin! <woo. laughs> If you only ate once a week and then try to make it through the week and try to be healthy, see, event, yes, that's definitely the fat disappears, hallelujah, but then also after a while, it starts to actually take away from your muscles, and, and it robs nutrients from your organs, and your body will do whatever it can to survive, but to, to eat once a week, to be healthy once a week is not enough. And so if you're trying to get out of that, Lord, just save me, Lord, just help me, just help me get through the next five minutes, there are seasons in our life, no doubt, where we're in valleys. And every five minutes, every 30 seconds, we need to say, God, I need you to help me just breathe right now. I get it. I've been in some of those places. I've cried till I had no more tears. I've been in those situations. For me, it was when I was a kid when my dad left, and uh, I didn't understand it all. And, and it was a time when I cried until the point I was sitting on my bed, and I realized, I'm still really sad, but I just got nothing else to, 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 to let go here. There are moments like that. But we, I don't know if it's everybody, and I could be generalizing, but we tend to, some of us, there's enough qualifications, we stay in our point of rescue. We need to be rescued. We keep that ring around our bodies, waiting for God to just pull us up until the next time we hit a wall and then pull us up again. And I, I'm in that boat too. I'll tell her the ring, so I'm not in the boat, but you know what I mean. We, we get to that place where we just need help, and sometimes we need it more than once. No question. But I have also seen in my life and others where, where we get a little bit of momentum, a little bit of traction, where, you know, reading the Word is becoming a regular thing for me. Worship is just something I do in my regular time connecting with God and, and connecting with other believers and praying for each other and lifting each other up. I'm getting in that kind of groove. I'm not always about to die and needing God to just save me. And yet, in fact, I'm feeling like God is just about to do something right around the corner and my spirit's full of anticipation because I'm seeing God do some really incredible things. I'd like to live there all the time. I'm sure there will be moments when I'm back at the other, stuck in the mud waiting for the Lord to, to pick me up. But I want to do more than just be making it as a believer. God has more for you guys than to just be making it. God has plans for you. He wants to use you for his glory. And it's not some heavy burden thing. It's, it's being part of the family business. It's, it's if you know peace and love, share peace and love. If you've had a revelation like we talked about the other week, we were sharing our revelations, talking about how God delivered us. And other people in the room were going, yeah, I have a son, I have a daughter, I need God to move there too. And I want you to understand that 
what we, when we get doing that, it, it feeds our spirit. And spirit or faith grows faith. You can even grow your own faith. Start declaring the word when you do, do uh, devotions out loud. Start marching around. Look silly. Definitely. Try to make yourself silly. Because as adults, we just don't. Is that a theology, Pastor? Make yourself silly? Well, David said, I will become more undignified than this. And he had one of his, his, I think, greatest worship experiences. He danced before an entire nation. And it was in a linen ephod, okay? So people go, oh, he was naked. Well, he was in this little white thing that, who knows? I don't know if it was raining out or what, but, but he just, he didn't care as an adult. He wasn't like, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? How's your relationship with God? I'm good. Thank you very much. God bless you. He was real. My encouragement is that we get some spiritual momentum. Because God has plans for us, and it's not just plans to survive. It's plans to, once we've recognized how to survive, that we will also start moving forward. Who can I tell about Jesus? Who can I share about the love of God? How can I share about my experience of God coming through for me when it, 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 looked, it looked bleak, it looked bad? It looked like I was in survival mode, and I survived it. Ha, there. And we start sharing it with other people. Or to see how someone I've been praying for forever finally came around, and God was moving. So I have this chunk of scripture, it's verses, uh, nine verses, but it's Joshua. The context is he's just stepping into leading an entire nation. He's, he's leading God's people, no pressure there. And he's leading them into God's promise. Again, more pressure. I want you to know that God will help you more than survive. He will help you succeed. Right. In the desert, they were simply learning to be free, because they've been slaves, and to follow God. And they even messed that up, which is why they had to spend 40 years being free and learning to follow God. But success is learning to step into the will of God for your, for your today and moving forward. Through battles with enemy, Israelites did that. Finding your way, Israelites did that. Staying together, Israelites had to do that. Stepping into your inheritance, what has been kept aside for you. Did you know that God has stuff set aside for you? I mean, really, God? Like lots of other people, but me? What, what does he have for me? Are you, well, you need to find out because <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. It's found in his word. It's, it's finding what you're going through in life. And you need God to answer something. You keep praying. We'll pray with you. And we'll watch God do something in your life. God has things for you. But if you're stuck in survival mode, then every time God wants to bless you, he's, wait, he's got this whatever to give you. He's want to birth a ministry in you or put a passion in you or call to ministry or, or someone he's put on your heart so you can minister to the Lord for the Lord in their lives. And, and he's like, okay, okay, son, go ahead. Oh, no, wait a second. You're... You're just trying to survive again. You, you're, you're stuck in a loop or you've fallen again or you've got an attitude problem still or you're still not letting this one thing go or you're identifying with this brokenness from way back here and I'm about to use you but you just keep letting that be where you're at. This is not a shame on you message. This is exhortation to rise up. Stand up for the one you believe in. Right? God has more. So let me read this scripture because God has more for us an adventure, a mission, a purpose and the beautiful part of this scripture this morning is, as I was with Moses, I will be with you. Let's read this together. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, therefore, arise and go over this Jordan, you and all his people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and the great sea towards and going down to the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man, say no man. No man. <laughs> I like that. Mankind, okay, just in case you, no one, no man will stand, will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and good, of good courage. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance all the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do accordingly to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it from the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, 
and you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For when you will make your way prosperous, then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So they're about to step into God's promise for them. And if you know anything, if you've read any more of Joshua, you realize there are a lot of battles that are coming in the chapters ahead. And what's amazing is he says, I want you to be strong and courageous. And I'm thinking, yeah, train up an army, get some tanks, you know, and so an air force and a navy. And, you know, let's like, let's get some paratroopers jumping in there behind enemy line. He says, be strong and courageous. And my next step is, yeah, let's go. Let's get ready to fight. And yes, they did fight, but that's not what God said. It's not what he said. No one will be able to stand before you. Be strong and courageous. And I'm thinking, kick butt, but that's not in there. <laughs> that's mine. Be strong and courageous. It says that you may observe the law that was from Moses. Be strong and courageous to live the life I'm calling you to in a world that doesn't live in a life like the one I'm calling you to. It will take strength. It will take courage to stand out to be that one who just is thinking different talking different sharing views that are against the they i'd like to meet they one day i got i got a few things to share with they they them those guys that's what they think that's what they say that's what they believe and you know what i'm going to just believe whatever you want as long as i get to believe what i want cuz i am believing that the scripture the word of god is informing me what i believe be strong and courageous and live according to the law of moses do not turn to the left or right don't season it with some of your own thoughts that kind of go along with it make sure it's the word of god that it will not depart from you. And it says, and you will prosper. You will be blessed. Be strong and courageous to live the word, and you will be blessed. That's not prosperity gospel. Funny, because we, when we say prosperity gospel, we think of like Cadillacs and gold and mansions and all that. Actually, the gospel is prosperity. You literally go from death to life. If that's not prosperous, <laughs> that's a return of more than 100%. I'm just saying. Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid or dismayed. Why? Because I'm strong enough? Because you warned me, I'm ready, I've trained for battle? No, because I am with you. Sometimes we face something we need to work through, but we don't want to always live working through. And we will be. We'll be working through stuff till we see Jesus face to face. I just don't want to be in survival mode all the time. I don't want to live like that. I want to live in the power of his Holy Spirit. See, we may hit a wall or, or an event happens that derails us, and we need to survive. Absolutely, God save us. Peter's in the water, and he's walking on water, woo and then he sinks. Jesus, save me. Of course Jesus reached out. He doesn't go, well, you should have had more faith, Peter. Sorry. He's getting deep now. I can barely see him. It's, the water's getting darker, right? He does save him. He pulls him up. And then what does he say? You have little faith. You know what that infers to me is that Jesus, Peter could have been walking all over the place. Hey, guys, I'm on, on water. Woohoo! I'm, I'm jogging around Jesus. Hey, Jesus, thanks. Just stay. And like he, from, from what it seems, he's like, oh, you have little faith. You're walking on water. You had no reason to worry about sinking until his eyes got on the wind and the waves. Take courage. And follow the word of God. He will save us, but he has more. And of course, he had way more for Peter. He didn't just pull him out of the water to save him. He didn't forgive him for denying him three times just to forgive him, although he did those things. He says, because you will be named Peter, and on this rock, I will build my church. He had more purpose than Peter surviving. Beyond that, Peter became one of the forefathers of the early church. He's the one who explained the day of Pentecost. To, to believers and unbelievers alike. There was a purpose. And you may not feel like you're a Peter, but I'll tell you what, God has purpose for every person in the body of Christ. Amen. That includes you. 
So I came across this quote, and it spoke to me. It's what directed me into this message. It says, if you chase Jesus as hard as you chase the things you think you want, you will end up with more than you ever need. That's not the word, but it's very similar to a word I'll refer to later in Matthew 6. Seek first, right? So this whole scripture, to break it down, Joshua 1, 9, basically these are the things. It says, get up, go, lead, take what I have given you. I'm with you like Moses. Be strong and courageous. Give liberally. Keep commands. You will prosper. You will succeed. Amen. Amen. That's it. Chases, chasing Jesus is more than just making it. It says, be strong and courageous, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. It was crucial for Joshua, who was about to lead a nation, and, and it, this was spoken over him long before he was in battles himself, as the king, as the, or sorry, as the leader of that people. See, Moses has always been that leader, and it's not like he'd never fought before, but now it was on him. I remember being an associate pastor, I mean, I've been in ministry since the 90s, but um, I, I would always be in ministry, and when some kind of situation came up, I could be like, well, I'm like the junior pastor. I, I'm, not, I'm just a youth pastor. I'll, I'll look to the, and I don't mean just, no disrespect, but back in the day, there was some of the mindset. I would say, well, you, what you need to do is you need to talk to the senior pastor. And then I went from doing youth and that to, to doing young adults and worship, and if there was a problem, I would say, well, what you need to do is talk to the senior pastor. Then I was an associate, and I was you know, doing small groups and, and uh, young adults, still all kinds of different things. And if there was an issue, I'd like to say, well, you need to go to the senior pastor. I was eight years up in Bancroft. I've been 11 years here. But I remember that first time when there was an issue coming up, and I was like, well, who you need to talk to is me. <laughs> uh, I'll have to get back to you. <laughs> um, I'm going to go call somebody. <laughs> it was different. The thing is, um, Joshua was now in that place, and he had prayed a lot with, jo with uh, Moses. In fact, in the tent of meeting, it says Moses came back to lead the people. Joshua stayed in the presence of God. He was prayed up before he stepped into this opportunity. He prayed up. And then he also got to lead under Moses. And one thing, the best things we could do as, as lead pastors, as, as people who are overseeing other people, is empower them and release them and get them to do stuff that they're anointed and called to do. And so we need to be about that too. Joshua was now in that place. Man, it's now on me and these people. I do not want to get this wrong. Moses got it wrong. He struck the rock the second time. Didn't end up coming to the promised land. Now they're going to the promised land and I'm the one leading them. <sighs> and he did well because he was courageous and strong and kept to the word of the Lord. So there's a call to pursue. God called Joshua to pursue the land promised to him and the people. We are called to pursue a deeper relationship with Christ. Not just surviving, but going deeper. This requires intentionality and focus. Our spiritual walk needs to be the most important pursuit on our list. Doesn't mean you don't work to eat and to have a home. That's fine. You, don't, you want to still stay active, have sports, do hobbies, do all those kinds of things. Nothing wrong with any of that. You can, in fact, do all that and bring glory to God through them. But we must pursue God because his promise is that we shall be like him, that he will empower us, he will bless us, that we will prosper. Instead of chasing empty things, we need to chase after the one who fulfills us. And so what has to happen first is a paradigm shift in our head that when I follow after God instead of after money or, or you know, being the best at this or being the best at that or, or accomplishing something, if I follow God, I, I could have the most money in the world but still honor God. I could be the best at something and still give glory to God. I could be known for this or known for that and still give glory to God. And at the end of the day, what I hope people know more about me is not all those other things, but the fact that I am becoming more like God. I'm a follower of God. That He's impacted my life. The call to pursue is there, like Joshua. If you stay with me, I will be with you like I was with Moses, and you will inherit the land. Every place you go, will be yours. Every opportunity that God had in store for those people was available to them. Do you know that everything God has spoken over your life or has for your life, whether you know it or not, God's saying, it's all there for you, every bit of it. Every place your feet is, are supposed to go, I've already given that to you. Amen. Money. Amen. 
What? Those blessings he has, they're yes and amen. And every one of them, I don't think I've stepped into every blessing God's had for me. It's not just because I haven't lived it yet. I'm sure there's times when I have blown it and, and taken less, believed less, stepped into less than what I should have. God forgive me. But let me challenge you because you may be in the same boat as I am. God's not finished. God's not finished with us. I still want to do more than survive. I want to move forward in my walk with God. And I want you all to be walking forward in your walk with God. You might think, man, I've come to a place where I was just so wrapped up in his presence and peace and joy. And it was awesome. Thank God for that. That's a gift from God to you. Hold on to that. But also to think that you have now experienced the biggest epitome, the biggest revelation of God's presence in your life. That would mean that you had already passed from this earth. And gone into the presence of heaven to be absent from the body and is present with the Lord. You would have to be standing face to face with him to, to re recognize the fullness of what God has in store for you. Because that's what's going to happen one day. Whether you die or he raptures his church, we're going to be with him one day. And then we are going to see exactly what he had for us. I'm praying to God that by the power of his Holy Spirit, I'm not, I'm not up there going, man, you had that for me too? I, I could have I done that. I could have stepped into this. I, I could have reached that person. I, I'm sure it's going to be a humbling moment in our imperfection. But instead of just being, oh, I'm surviving, oh, I'm surviving, oh, I'm surviving, finding out what God has for us next so that we're thriving and saying, okay, God, you have something next for me? Let's go do it. Let's get into it. Shape me. Help me. If I have to walk through something because you want to make me ready for this other thing, here I am, Lord. Send me. The call to pursue, the courage to chase. Pursuing Jesus requires courage. Much like Joshua needed courage to lead the Israelites. It means stepping out of our comfort zones, not tripping over ourselves, facing fears, stepping over the past, and trusting in God's promise. You just keep moving forward in Christ, and he will take care of the rest. I am with you, like I was with Moses. That's a huge promise. Now, I know directly here it's from Moses to, to Joshua, but imagine yourself stepping into the presence of God like Moses. As a man who spoke to God face to face. That's an enviable connection. That's crazy. That's incredible. And I've heard God speak, not in a big booming voice as the heavens open, but I've heard God speak to me. I've heard him lead me. I've seen it through visions and dreams, confirmations with my wife having visions and dreams, and bumping into people who just happen to be thinking or talking about the same thing that we've been praying into and asking about. God still does that stuff. So we need a call to pursue. We need the courage to do it. The strength God promised Joshua is the same strength he gives us today. As we chase after Jesus, he's the one who gives us the courage and strength to overcome challenges and fears and possess every promise that he has laid before us. Every place you put your feet, every place you go, I will do it. <laughs> it takes courage to obey is what it really is. How many times did God go before the armies? They didn't even have to fight. In the Old Testament, it says, and they sent the worship team out. That's why I play the keyboard. It's big enough if anyone comes near me. Because <laughs> a flute just might not do it, you know? Or a microphone. He sent out the worshipers to a battle. Now, this is before automatic weapons, so that's a good thing. But, you know, it's like, where are the snipers at? Because I'm a worship leader, right? They went forward worshiping and praising God. And the Holy Spirit went ahead of them. And so when they got to the battle and they're ready for this fight, and it was done. It was done before it began. Because God had gone before them. And that's not to say that you and I haven't walked through some real battles, and so did the Israelites. But God delivered them from them all. And he will deliver you. The call to chase, the courage to chase. And what, what are we chasing after, really? We chase the one, the one our success comes from. We chase the one our success comes from. 
When we shift our focus uh, to chasing Jesus, we discover a life filled with abundance, spiritually, emotionally, and even material. Here's the verse, Matthew 6, It says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. All of the promise, all of the things God has in store for you. It's taken me a long time, but I realize that what God has for me is usually better than what I, I thought I wanted for myself. And you learn that on one front, you're like, yes, God, I'm there, yeah. And then on something else, you're thinking, but I just wish this would happen. And God's like, actually, no. <laughs> just stop that. I, said, I don't want this for you. I have this for you. Well, well that's better than that one. Yeah. <laughs> this one is way easier than, I, than walking to this. And now I just, you just want me to walk. Yeah. Th this thing is worth way more than what this was worth. I had my eyes set on this. And all along, I was like, you know what? Just hold on a second, because if you just step through this door for five seconds, I will show you. We want what's behind door number one, and he's like, no, door number two, door number two. He has other things, and we need to make sure that our, our desires, our pursuits, our directions, our to-do list is open-handed. You want to be like Jesus, you can be like him in his resurrection, but also with him in his crucifixion. Be with him at the Garden of Gethsemane. God, I've got all kinds of plans, all kinds of desires, all kinds of direction for my life. Not my will, but yours. I don't want to just survive. I, I want to do more than just making it. Not my will, but yours. It won't feel like it until after you do it. I guarantee you, any faith step, you will not feel like making it before you start making it. And then as you're stepping out, God starts to move. All the Israelites saw were giants in the land. He's like, move towards your promise. But there's, there's giants in the land. <laughs> move towards your promise. Okay, we're doing it. Overcame the first nation that rose up against us. And we're marching and we're doing this. And he's going before us and it's happening. And that's where we needed to get to. They didn't know that God was going to deliver them until they actually marched out and saw God deliver them. So the call to chase, the courage to chase, chase the one who are success from, it was God who brought them into the promised land, and they didn't even do it perfectly, and yet he still brought them in to the promised land, learning to walk in God's presence. Joshua was assured that God would be with him wherever he went. Over that hill? Yep, that's yours too. Down the street? Yep. All of it, all of it, all of it. This promise was not just for Joshua, it's for each of us. As we chase after Jesus, we experience his presence for our life, guiding us, comforting us, providing peace amidst chaos, and birthing some great things in us. I want to see God birth some great things in this church. And he is. He already is. Already is. You know, I had a heart and passion for, for the Filipino a small group to happen years ago. And I only shared it with Marge. It's kind of like, hey, you know, I wonder if one day... That might be like, now we're doing it. And, and I love that distinction. Um, there's, there's other groups we could be starting. There's other deeper lives we could be starting. There's other ministries in this, this church we could be starting, in this community we could be doing. We could be ministering to those construction workers who slow me down when you're coming into work. And <laughs> ministry of offering a cold cup of water, whatever it takes. God has purpose for us. So learning to walk in his presence, he's going to be able to show us what our full inheritance looks like. What a full inheritance looks like. In this day and age, there's all kinds of things that want to chip away at your inheritance. The things God has set apart for you. I just want to make sure that you aren't giving up pieces of your own inheritance. Because it's there for the taking and we're not taking it. It's there for us to step into and we're not stepping anywhere. Or we're stepping in our own direction. I want what God wants for me. promise not just for Joshua, it's for each of us. As we chase Jesus, we experience his presence in our lives. When we walk with him, we find out that we were never alone. And what fulfills us begins to line up with what, with what God has for us too. You follow God long enough, you're going to start to want the things that God wants. And you're going to see what God has in store for you. You're going to start doing it. 
And of all the other things that you thought would fill you up and fulfill your life, you're going to find out that the things that are meaning most to you are the things that God has brought you to. And you're doing them in Christ, for Christ. And that is what's going to get in your spirit. Like, that is it. This is what I was made for. This is what I was supposed to do. And when you know that, walking it out will be exciting. Be one of the best things you get to be a part of. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. As I promised Moses, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, Joshua, I promised you, believers, son, daughter, we were given the right to be called the children of God through the work of Christ, which means God has an inheritance for you too today. So yes, if you need help to survive, God bless you with enough peace and strength to live through each moment, absolutely. But also, when you're ready, start chasing after God. Start running after the things God has in store for you. Some of you already have a list. You already know, and you're like, yeah, you know, one day, that's how be me. I'm going to get there. Start now. Start, if nothing else, start by praying. Well, God, you said I'm supposed to do this then. Lord, when you help get my heart right, help me get my focus, help me start believing that this is what you have for me. You know, when you start stepping into God's direction, there will be pushback from the enemy, I guarantee it. And they all lived happily ever. <laughs> the only part of the lived happily ever after in scriptures and revelations when Jesus comes for his church. Between now and then, there is battles ahead of us. There's stuff we got to do. And even our flesh, we're going to have to wage war against that too until we get to line up with what God has for us. But the pursuit of God will not leave you empty. I give you my 100% guarantee. Living a life for Jesus Christ will fulfill you. It may take some time. You may have doubts. You may wonder. You may go through some stuff. But I'll tell you what. When you recognize the reality of God in his manifest presence, his peace washes over you, his joy blesses you, his faith increases you, you step into stuff you never thought you could step into because he's opened that door. Come on. We maybe have to do some testimonies of that too, maybe in another week or two. Next week, I'm already talking about what power? God's power. And uh, so I think it's going to be powerful. And, and then we have our district uh, assistant superintendent coming. And we've got some great services coming in the coming weeks. But I know that ever since we came into this fall, I really believe like the Spirit of God is preparing us to do something. So I, what I'm doing is I'm trying to clean house and just stay like, we need to get some stuff out of the way. God wants to birth some new things. So if you just get ready and focus on the fact that God wants you to do more than just make it, then you're ready for what's coming next. And I, I got to believe it's going to be amazing. Amen? Amen? Come on, get all Pentecostal on me. That's all right. It's all right. God is good. God is good. God's plan is not only to save you, but to use you for his glory. All of our expectations will be blown away. Our end goal will look different, but it will be the journey that God has called us to. Chase after him, and our lives will deepen in their meaning, in their purpose, and their fulfilling. We will more than just make it. Worship team, come on up. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I praise you and thank you, Lord, that you, you have greater faith in us than maybe than we do in you sometimes. You, uh, you've done everything it takes to forgive us and restore us and empower us. And, and in doing that, Lord, you're preparing us for something that is incredible. And I pray, God, that we will not sell you short by selling ourselves short. That you've made us for more. And I pray that we would recognize that. Help us step into everything that you've set apart for us to do. Forgive us when we've missed it, but let's not stay there either. <laughs> Your mercies are new every morning. It's time to step into what you have. So God, help us strip away all of the extra noise and just focus on what you have for us. I press into you in prayer and worship and devotion. And God, you want to do greater things. Your scripture says greater things will we do in your name. So God, do a work in us to strip away yes, things Jesus. that don't belong and fill them with you. Thank you for your love and your patience, God. Will we figure that out? 
do your desired work in us today so that we do more than thank you. The lover of our souls, we love you back, Jesus. All God's people said, amen. Let's stand if you're able, let's worship. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest phrase, but holy trust in Jesus' name. Sing that much again. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest phrase but holy trust in Jesus name Christ alone on our stone we made strong in the Savior's love through the storm
trust him. That everywhere we go this week, we'll ask ourselves, Jeez. is this where God is leading me? Mm. Is this what God has for me? Thank you, Lord. And we will hand you over the things that we think are important. Mm. And learn how to take the things that you are laying before us. Mm. And we will step into those things. Because you're good, you're so good, and every good and perfect gift comes from the Father of lights. And we know we need you, God. And help us look to you for our solution instead of other places. Mm -hmm. Help us look to you for leading us, not only to survive, but to thrive in Jesus' name. In mm -hmm. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, church.